Yeah.
of Athens State University welcome you to our production of Love Spire, seven plays inspired by seven Shakespearean sonnets in the studio theater of the Alabama Center for the Arts. At this time, we ask that you turn off all mobile phones and portable electronic devices, and please refrain from any photography of this performance, as it can be distracting to our actors. Restrooms are located in the lobby directly behind the box office. Unless it is an absolute necessity, please refrain from using them during the performance, as our backstage is currently overrun by emotionally volatile artists, Southampton party guests, a mosh pit of Hell's Angels, and one neurotic schmendrick who has obviously wet his pants. In the unlikely event of an emergency, please use the aisles between the seating risers on either side of the rear of the theater, and follow the exits out into the lobby or backstage hallway in an orderly fashion. Please take a moment now to locate the exit aisle nearest to you. And now, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. <coughs> this again now? It's not your fault. It's my fault. Everything's fucked up and it's my fault. I'm afraid. I'm afraid of you. Why are you afraid of me? Because you actually love me with real love, not pornographic catch the prize love. And don't you love me? Yeah, you're right. I love you too, Herman. Let's go to bed. If we both die tonight, like Romeo and Juliet, that wouldn't be so bad, would it? That would be great. <laughs> <laughs> I really fucked up this time. Hey, you still make mistakes. I'm no saint. You're not. I thought you were. Listen, well, don't we take this wedding gown off? They cost a fortune to dry clean, and then you can tell me what's bothering you. Yeah, you're right. I love you, Herman. Whatever happens, here.
Kermit, come sit down on the couch for a sec. I gotta tell you something. Okay. So, where'd the bottle go? I put it away. Okay, okay. Listen, Herman, you're a nice guy. Oh, no. What? You're gonna start with this whole, you're a nice guy, I'm a shiver team. You're gonna tell me how you're no good for me. No, no, I am no good for you. You know how something bad will happen? You figure, why worry about it? It'll probably go away. Shit, I suck. <laughs> Listen, raise the money. I love you. As they say, warts and all. What warts? <laughs> I don't have any warts. I'm just saying. No, no. I know I have warts. I've got warts with the size of mountains. I just wish you had some because i got to tell you this. Okay, what? Do you remember when we first started going out? Oh, yeah? In those first two weeks, we were floating on air. We talked every night over the phone. You took me to a boule. You slipped a five to the mayor D. I'd never been with a guy cool enough to do that. I read about it in a book. And we had that amazing boat ride on the fair. We got drunk and you took me home and you were so amazing. You just didn't seem like an all night ride me. I couldn't get enough of you. Well, that's for sure. I couldn't walk for two days. <laughs> and I thought, what is she doing with nothing like me? Yeah, right. And I thought the same thing. He's so smart, <laughs> sweet, <laughs> handsome, and a surprisingly great lady, and has a job and everything. And six months later, we're getting married. Listen, if you want to wait to really be sure, we can. It's whatever you want. No, oh, wait. Wait, wait. This is kind of bigger than that. Bigger than our wedding? So when we first started going out, I thought it was too good, and I kept thinking, what's the catch? And I thought, I'm falling too fast, and I'm going to hit the ground to break every bone in my body. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> well, not in such a melodramatic way, but yeah, it was intense. It still is. Yeah, it is, and that's the thing. It's getting more intense all the time. I mean, if I ever thought you would leave me, never. or something ever happened to you, I think I would just flip out, and I've never felt that way about a guy, a man, before. You're just, like, too good to be true. Listen, can I say something here? I feel the same way. It's love, right? Real love. I think a lot of people have fake love, but we're lucky. We have the real thing. Yeah, but that's the problem. Why? Because fear's a part of it? That's life, kid. If you have something wonderful, you just might lose it. Yeah, but Herman. What? There were other guys. This is news? No, I mean, since I was sure I was going to get crushed by you and I had no idea what was going on, it was so good. I just needed something to ground me. You were seeing other guys while we were going out. Sort of. I mean, my heart was not into it anyway whatsoever. I don't have to tell you this. I'm a nice guy, Ridgen, but I'm not a wimp. I so. don't want to tell you this. Well, you've got me all interested now. So, <laughs> I was in this bar one night getting shit-faced because I was so in love with you. And it felt so weird, and I figured the best antidote to how intense our love was was something just as intense, but in the other direction. Other direction? Let me finish. So I'm sitting there thinking this, and this biker guy, Red, comes up next to me, and I figured it was fate. So I hung out with him a while. For a while? See, he doesn't love me. Well, actually, I think he does a <laughs> lot. But he's like your opposite. He throws me around. He's into rough sex. Rough sex? It's just hex sex, Herman, and that's pretty much the whole story. Pretty much. Well, we shot dope a couple times, smoked some crack, and <laughs> oh yeah, he never listens to me. What? <laughs> this is news. <laughs> How long has this been going on? Well, I haven't seen him for about three days. What? Because I love you. I needed this monster in my life just in case. You need him because he hurts you? No, oh, it's not like that old cliche. I only love you. But you're seeing him too. Listen, I don't see him. He sees me. I want you and I were really happening. I told Red it was over. But that was like four months ago, and he's hard to convince. So he forces himself on you. Well, that was kind of the deal in the first place. He's an animal, Herman. He's the kind of guy who likes to start fights and hopes that the cops show up so he can fight them too. So what happens now? Well, I told him I was getting married. 
Sam? Said that was great. Said he'd come over the night before and give me a goodbye fuck and plans to stop by <laughs> once a week to get his pipes clean. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is criminal. Yeah, but I started it. I needed, like, an antidote. <laughs> <laughs> So just tell him you won't see him anymore. Honey, do you want to be married to a woman with all her teeth? Wait a minute. You said the night before. Uh huh. That's tonight. Uh huh. Tonight, like now. Uh huh. And that's why you're getting drunk. Uh huh. I'll tell him that's over between you. No, you can't. Why? Do you still love him? Oh, you idiot, I really love you. That's why I don't want to see you get mashed to a Herman burger. Oh, shit. I will tell him. No, baby, please, he'll peel your skin off and make you a saddlebag and put you on the side of his Harley. That's a Harley? Of course, he's a biker. <laughs> Go to the bedroom. No, please. Go to the bedroom or I'm calling off the wedding. I don't care what my mother says. <laughs> Just promise me if he tries to kill you, you'll jump out the window or something. Go. The fuck? Yes. <laughs> Where is Rinjin? Not here. Who are you? Herman, her fiance. Yeah? Yes. Fuck! <laughs> and you are? Red. Motor Captain, North Reading Chapter, Hell's Angels. So where is she? She's dead. Say what? She died uh, three days ago. I just saw her three days ago. <laughs> well, she died. Um, Cops aren't really sure what happened. Said she died of contusions. They're looking for a biker. Contusions? Yes, very bad. They said she had a uh, had rough sex. Wow. She's dead. <laughs> yeah. You're her boyfriend, right? Yes. So why are you sad? I am sad. M me too. I'm sad too. So, oh, I need to see my mother, sir. A toast, her engine! A toast! A great piece of ass! A great <laughs> piece of ass. She told me about you. Really? Yeah. Said you were a stabilizing influence. Whatever the fuck that means. That's what I'm saying. She said things were so intense with me, she needed someone to bring her back to Earth. Like you were an antidote or something. She said that? What? That I was an antidote? Yeah, something like that. Well, I thought she loved me. She did. She did. But bitches are bitches! Know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't know about bitches. I thought I knew about Ranger. Well, she's gone and we'll miss her. What else can you say? <laughs> you killed her. Me! You beat her up and you killed her. <laughs> You're dreaming, pal. She was a wonderful girl. You defiled her and you killed her. Now, I don't have her anymore. So? So now, I'm gonna kill you. Maybe not right now, but someday. How are you planning to do that? I'll think of something. You'll have to find me. How hard can it be? Good luck, pal. Good fucking luck. That's it. What? You come into my life, ruin it, and it's good luck, pal? You're better off this way. I did you a favor, pal. You've got your head up your ass. And when you get around to pulling it out, you'll realize there ain't no such thing as love. Not with Renjin, not with anybody. There's only the battle. And in every battle, only one person wins. Oh yeah? Well, I'm gonna win. I'm gonna stalk you for the rest of your days, and I'm gonna win. No, you're not. Cause I'm out of here. Uh, nice knowing you. I'll find you. The cops will find you. Contusions. <laughs> Listen, big guy. I'm walking out this door, and if you even try to get near me, anywhere, any place, I will call you so many new assholes that you...
You. What? What, big guy? Just. Just. Stay away from me! Dad. Yeah. You made him go away permanently. You're a genius. You tricked him all permanently. and I love you. Those things he said. It's all bullshit. Is it? Hey, it's me. Remember? You? The woman you love? Lorenzen. I made a mistake. I'm human. There are mistakes. And then there are mistakes. Listen, Herman. If you like getting your back scratched, you're going to get bitten now and again. I like both of those things. Oh, I know you do. But you were bad. You cuckled me, and we could have been killed. That was then, and this is now, okay? Okay. Did you bring yourself to make me sound like that? Let me put a magic or whatever you do. to be high time? Can you hear the thrashing, the ebb? See where our toes dig deep in wet sands, only disappearing if we move? Motion is inevitable. You are definitely correct. No doubt about it, wife. I sometimes must keep myself from jumping in all over the place. So I see. You do? Oh, my The point I can find just six, eight, and three, four. The flow of you in my arms. You know what I mean? 
I want, no, I need to know what you need. Is that the right term? Leaders? Aren't you aiming a bit low? You have to know what he has seen before any of that. No, it is not meter. Meters indeed distance. And I'm virtually on top of you. With that you were? I'm sorry. I didn't catch that last. Did you repeat that? Oh, what? Repeat that. <laughs> then go ahead, what's stopping you? Well, you seem otherwise engaged. I mean, just say, how could I possibly attribute to my just that thing? Oh, that is here to me. What if I were to lie before you? Totally open to your touch. Your fingers have been tasked with upon my back, letting the willow side by the brook, the basketball run. The slides of skateboards careened by my cheek. What if your fingers found music here? That ain't nothing I see, mother. Me reader, my sugar pie honey bunch. But it's not the secret. No? No. What am I missing? Listen. What do you mean, listen? That's all I can do is listen to you. You're closing my lips like the canary by Sam Cage. So why I stop like bouncing to the beat up and down and all around? Can't you just see yourself? Top down, head drop, back, like me. Dance to the side of yourself. You woman, can you hear me? You understand what I'm saying to you? Yeah. You want me to let you ride this my car that I worked so hard on. Let Vatos laugh at me till I learn the mystery of my own mechanical systems? Complex, my brother man. Takes a learned touch. Haven't you seen them ads on the television? Don't be those strangers. Unless you know them. Why are you talking to yourself? You trying to make me feel less than a man? I got a learned touch. Shit. I can touch a Hilton Ruin. <laughs> Jimi Hendrix and all attention. What you got to say to them? I'm waiting for you. Wait? Wait for what? What more do you want from me? I want to hear you. I've been pouring my heart out to you, girl. I've never talked more like I've been talking. What you talking about? <laughs> Come on, I'll say your key. Like I'm not right here in front of you. Beside you. You're a friend to get to me now. Good. Let go. Let go? Let go of what? Let go of some of my music you took from me. I ain't got your music, woman. I know. And what do you want? Some of yours. my poor lips, which should at harvest reap, and the wood's bones by the blushing stain. To be so tickled, it would change your state, the situation of those dancing chips, or whom thy fingers swallow with gentle gait, making dead wood more blessed than little lips. Since saucy jacks so happy are in this, give them thy fingers, me, thy lips to kiss.
other. I know everything. Except how it feels, of course. No, we'll assume it feels good. We'll assume you get so lost that you forget who you are, where you are. Who cares who you are? You think you're going to die, don't you? And you wish you would too, because it's all going to be downhill after this. Man alive. You didn't know you had it in you, but I did. I could have told you that. If you just, if you knew how these things were done, you would walk right through that door and tell me you love me. Stupid. I know it's stupid, but you would walk right through that door and convince me that you love me. Like a doctor were if I were dying, if I'm dying, when I'm dying. Tell the doctor to tell me how great I look, okay? I don't want to be told I'm dying. I know I'm dying. I'm the one doing the dying. first day I met you, I knew you would betray me. But put water under the bridge, okay? Uh, just tell me you love me and we can start there. Just tell me you love me and we can start over. Unless, unless, I will go mad, David, I will go mad. But if anyone asks, I'll tell them where you are and who you're with, which won't be far from the truth, not too far. He's in her bed, he's in her hair, he's in her mouth all day, all night. He comes home and he doesn't even speak. He comes to me and he doesn't say a word. But pretty soon, David, they won't even see you. They will see you shaking in the pleasure of her. They will feel her. They will taste her. And they'll hate you. Hate you. And they will abandon you in your pleasure. And they'll comfort me. Unless you could just stop staring at her. No, now you talk. Me. You just sit there and shut up! Will you even think about feeling sorry for me? I'll kill you. No, I'm not kidding. How long has this been going on, huh? Such a fucking fool. How many of us have you had, huh? Stop it. Stop calling your name. I'm sorry. I do. Not the right thing, obviously. Like, you had any idea what that was. Was there anything I could have done to please you? I doubt it. <laughs> Look, I loved you. That was my excuse, okay? Okay, all I ask is, all I ask is, can't we just be smart about this? I mean, we don't have to humiliate each other here because, believe me, if you make me look stupid here, I don't have any choice. I'll say whatever I have to say to stay on top of this thing. And you know what that leaves you, baby. Baby, baby, don't make me be like this. You love me. I know you love me. Tell me you love me. Tell me you didn't care about this other man or woman or whoever the hell it was. Tell me it was just a one time. I want something I can believe, okay? That's all I want. I want to believe that we have something more 
than the physical thing, I mean. I mean, the physical thing was, it was great. <laughs> Wasn't it great? <laughs> you have no right to treat me like this, not to talk to me like this. <sighs> okay, Jackie, it's okay. You want to have other people, then have other people. Just have them in some other city, okay? You want me to say please, and I'll say please. You just come home and I'll say please. Or how about we just not talk about it at all? I won't say any of this. You'll just agree that whenever we're in the same room with one of your lovers that you won't look at them. That'll work, I think. Okay? So you can hate me? What did I do? It wasn't you. I would have done whatever you wanted. It wasn't what I wanted. It was who. It wasn't what I wanted someone to do. It was who I wanted to do it. To me. With me. Not me? <laughs> no. Not you. I'm sorry. You couldn't help it? Maybe I could. I, I, I probably could. But I didn't. I, I didn't help it. You're going to be sorry, Roland. I'm already sorry. What am I supposed to do? Undo it. You're supposed to undo it. You want me to undo it? Yes. Undo this. Yes. Shall I undo this? Yes. Now? Now. Undo this. Undo this? You want me to undo this? Can you? My pleasure. Now. Undo it now. And this? And this. Yes? Can you undo this? Undo this? And this. Can you undo all this for me? Uh, I, uh, 
I didn't need them. It was just their, their, their dreams. It was an idea I had, just so real, um, real, um, actual chicken feathers. Hand drink, quilted, sort of big squares between sheets of sheer, um, raw silk. Hendrick. <laughs> I find it say raw a lot these days. Uh, raw silk, raw, um, um, burlap steak, wound me, eat me raw, the raw truth, raw, and, um, rank, rank betrayal. Hendrick, all this coil is long of you, mistress, as they say, raw. Not like I'm not perfectly contented to be free of this room and your ultimate indifference to the, uh, the, uh, the, uh... Hendrick! I want back in. No! Why not? I... Why? We terminated. So? You, because... What? You frightened me. <gasps> <laughs> You're not supposed to say things like that. You're not really supposed to say anything. I can say whatever I want, Hendrick. You're not my patient so, anymore. So? Mm. do frighten me. Well, I am in love with you. Transference. I don't believe in transference. Uh-huh. All love is transference. Breast, mom, every fucking other fucking... Hendrick! I love you! Hen, you do not! I, I mean, do. It's Hendrick, not I... transference. I have problems in my head, Hendrick! Problems! Problems. Who thought you terminated with him? Tell me to leave. Is it bad today? This isn't going well, and perhaps I should. I should not have said that you frightened me. Countertransference. Oh. Unanalyzed countertransference. What? It's. Oh. It's not counter, so. It's what? Reality? I am. I mean. I actually am frightening. Uh, I mean me. I um uh, the um. <laughs> wow. And how would it make you feel if I said you were frightening? But you did say that. Uh, but how would it make you if? But how? No hypothetical. But how? No, you still said it. Sleep with me at least. <laughs> <laughs> You're gay. Oh yeah. <laughs> So what? Gay. What is that? You're a dyke, I'm gay, so... Actually, I'm not Oh, sure. come on! What? You wear... Harley Davidson boots, and you have short hair. Once I wore those boots. We saw each other for... You were my patient. I... What? We didn't see each other. Oh, for five years. You make it sound like we dated. You think this is about my mother! I mean, I don't not not think this is Well, I think you're a guy. Lesbian. Wasn't hostile. Felt like it. Huh? He's a guy. <laughs> He's supposed to be. So, are you to my thoughts as food to life? Stop it. I've gained 24 pounds. Or sweet season showers are to the ground. Last night on the subway, I urinated in my pants. And for peace of you, I hold such strength. Stop it. I hate sonnets. Boring, boring, boring! As twixt a miser and his wealth is found! I'm broke! I know women who have slept with you. New York is a tiny village. Well, it isn't. But I have worked with women who have uh, slept with you. No, you don't. Yes, I do. No, you don't. Yes, I do. I know you're a lesbian. And how does that make you feel? Don't sleep with me. I'm going to charge you for this visit. I'll pay twice what I pay. You're broke. I'll mug someone. <laughs> You keep using the word sleep. Sex. Sleep isn't sex. Nitpicker. Oh, it's interesting. Tiny nitpicker. I think you can sleep with me, uh, have sex with me, because unlike the truly great analysts of the past who have unshakable faith in the stern tenets of their discipline, you and all modern practitioners of, well, of anything, of psychoanalysis in this instance, and our um, pickle, conundrum, whatchamacallit, have, well, faith but no unshakable faith. No one does in anything these days. We have ambivalence. It's why we tattoo ourselves. What? 
So like the priests that wind up sleeping with children, it's not their fault. I mean, we should put them in prison, kill them probably. I know that's a bad thing to say, but everyone, well, seems like everyone should be killed, you know? In a world in which no structure rests assuredly on assurance of a foundation. Because even, take even an old atheist like Freud. God was still watching. He was watching all the way up from the top until and so on and so forth. <laughs> until today. Today, well, take me for instance. Only you have been seeing me for five years. <laughs> Nothing lasts longer than five years. Used to be, used to be, 10 at least. And so, abuse of one's, of your um, subjects, patients, inwards, uh, inferiors, well, it's wrong, but not absolutely. Because there's simply no absolutes to the, uh, uh, the, uh, the associative link to tattoos is interesting. Well, tattoos last. Your mother was tattooed. Oh, that again. <laughs> I'm absolutely never going to have sex with you. Because I'm fat, urinating my pants, and I'm broke and frightened? I have a thought disorder. I don't think you do, actually. I think I do. But perhaps the thinking I do is a result of that thought disorder. If you have a thought disorder, and you think you do, then you're thinking a correct thought, in which case you don't have a thought disorder. But if you don't have a thought disorder, but you think you do, that is a disorder, in which case I do. But, well, you get the point. It's a small point. I saw a man with tattoos all over his body yesterday, covering almost all of his flesh like an epidermatological crisis. <laughs> now that's frightening. But I thought, wow, um, but his skin will always smell like cheap ink. But then I thought, wow, the pain. He must have really enjoyed that suffering. I bet he remembers every little inky stick. This is how he knows he's been here, because it hurt to be. He has inscribed proof of his, well, not existence. Okay, sure, existence, sure, existence. Inscribed on his, on his own, in the only arena available to the late 20th century citizen seeking effectivity, his or her skin. I cannot change the world besides the small world that's bound by my flesh. I can change nothing. I can only hire a biker with a needle to bruise into my flesh, live free, or die. <laughs> I'm scared. I'm scared of this world. I really want to come back to you. Maybe I'll get a tattoo. Ambivalence, it expands our options. It increases our freedom to, to, um, to tattoo ourselves, if we wish. Uh, to have a concept like ourselves or myself, it makes us more ambivalent and more free, which drives us crazy and more desperate to find non-ambivalent things, like tattoos, which for all their permanence and pain, serve merely as markers of how ambivalent and impermanent we are, or feel we are. Actually, tattoos are removable nowadays. I hate how you introduce irrelevancies. <laughs> oh, I have a boyfriend now. Oh, that's good. He's beautiful, and he has no soul. None. <laughs> In nature, there's no deformity but the mind. None are evil but the unkind. Beauty is, um, beauty is good. Beauty is goodness. But even the beauteous evil are empty trunks of flourished by the, the whatchamacallit, the, um, the devil, the devil, the devil. As they say, I don't, I don't, by the way, believe that you're right that my mother named me Hendrick because it sounds like Spendrick. Uh, she was Dutch! It's a Dutch name for Christ's sakes, not because, um, um, not because it sounds like Spendrick. I don't think she meant that. I think that's wrong. I think you could be, um, um, I could see you for malpractice for suggesting that, for, for uh, planting, uh, inscribing, whatchamacallit, for forging neural pathways into my brain. Eternal ambivalence is lethal. You ruined my life. <laughs> but she did call you Schmendrick Hendrick. So? <laughs> so? You were born, it's Dutch, but you were born in Massachusetts.
Massapequa. Spindra Kindred. The words are practically homonymic. Oh, they're homophonous, actually. They're homonym and homophone are homologous. They're homophonous. They're homonyms. Though homophony is the precise. Though homophony could be the precisely, but it's Though not. Though there is a word more precisely connoting the closeness of imprecession. <laughs> but I don't remember that word. Uh, homophones are like tattoo and tattoo. No, those aren't. They're like. Oh. <laughs> My mom's favorite ask uh, actor was Oscar Homolka. When she would get mad at me, she would say, What have you done, Oscar Homolka? Listen up, Oscar Homolka. Uh, the subtext of the last minute is homosexual. Damn, beat you to it. Pissed. Oh, this coil is long of you. I want back in. Tattoos, they're, they're taboo for Jews. It's taboo. It's taboo! <laughs> <laughs> like anal sex. I'm not a homosexual. I can't be. I have no talent to be. And besides, the, the anal sex, it, it disgusts me. Ooh. Hell, sex, ugh, kills me with heart. Well, that's too strong, disgust. Do you know why that is? I don't know why it doesn't disgust everyone. But it doesn't. I don't know why. All sex has fragrance and is sometimes malodorous. Love like a tar rose, overwhelmed with its fierce volatility, the mephetic pungency of elimination of waste. When two lovers are conjoining, when my cock is up your butt. <laughs> That's horribly, horribly, horribly revolting what you just said. I'm going to vomit. Shit transform! No, it doesn't. It's irreducibly revolting. That is its essence to revolt and spread disease. You are very beautiful, but you have no soul. Shit transforms when you're in love. Oh, maybe I've never been in love before. Maybe not. How sad. Kendrick, the, wait a minute. But you love me. I do. But how is that possible? I mean, look at me. <laughs> it, it, you're just, you have no soul. I'm almost reasonable. Be sure about that. You're a, a satyr, a, a priapist. Nothing human is alien to you. It's inhuman. Not having a soul makes a person indiscriminate. Makes it possible to fall in love with unworthy object choices like you. <laughs> but if I don't let you fuck me, you leave me! I thought he was gone. I thought he terminated. But he asked to see me. What's his real name anyway? Sure as hell isn't Schmentrick. I hate him. I shouldn't let him back. I won't. Ever. Promise. Uh, ever. Banished. Be gone. I don't understand. I have to leave you. But that's... That's crazy! I mean, you love me so much, my shit smells like a tar of rose. I can't say that without feeling nausea, but you say it does. But you're going to leave me if we don't fuck. Yes, because your refusal means you don't love me. I know that's bad to say, but we both know what the refusal means. You don't love me, Hendrick, and that makes me sad. It makes me want to die. So what? If you leave me, you're going to die? Or are you just going to find another boyfriend who has no problem with the smell of a tar? Um... The latter! <laughs> this morning I dreamed the bed was full of sand. I don't understand. Is it bad today? Hi-ho, hi-ho, it's off to work I go! <laughs> yes, it's very, very bad. <laughs> I want to die. God has close my womb and I want to die as a lesbian and a feminist and a rational progressive person and everything that I am as lucky as I am I know it's bad to say this but I don't give a fuck I am so fucking depressed I want to die 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 I want to have a baby I can't have a baby, then I want to die. I can't take any more of those pills. I don't want to get cancer. I don't want to super ovulate. I just want to have a baby so bad that I want to die. But I really don't want cancer, but I do want 
to die. Oh, I hate the baby that won't be born. I hate the five failed sperm donors. Inexplicably, I hate you. Certainly, I hate myself. I can't describe the hatred for the doctors who... I have projected my hatred for the doctors and their super ovulators onto my shrink and her antidepressants, so I can't remember to take my Zoloft, which I need to do, but I hate her and her Zoloft for seeking to rob me of my death desiring depression, which is not the only thing left of my baby. I don't believe in God. I never did. Not even a little bit, but my hate believes in God, and God has decided to close my womb, so fuck God! As my patients are jabbering away on the couch, I wish I had a big, Sand bucket, you know, like the ones kids play with at the beach. Uh -huh. And I imagine a big plastic shovel, and I am slowly and deliberately and seriously filling their mouths with sand. But you know, not just to shut <laughs> up! I wish all the world was burnt to a cinder. I wish I lived on the island of Montserrat. Um, I do live on the island of Montserrat. You know, that island with the island of the volcano. I imagine you calling my patient saying, Dr. Zabber is dead. <coughs> Esther is dead. She's killed herself. Here are the referrals. Oh, they'd be all so shocked and so sad, but I was so deeply gratified to have finally heard your voice. My lover, parasites. Wait, wait, die, die. My bed is near. Every morning's, I'm sorry, but it's only ever. Oh no, not this again. And you know what? My complete lack of hope is all that keeps me alive. If I thought for one moment I felt hope, I'd have the courage to kill myself. For real. There's always douching. <laughs> Don't you is I'm a short Why? Of no reason. Uh, well, foolproof. Oh, I hate that. What? The continent of the weary wives you lax on to. Ah, oh, well, foolproof. Americans don't say ah. Oh. Ah, oh, well, foolproof. Ah, oh, well, smell of feces. In the full burger party of my use, we would eat it on petit poi of tiny platters of little cheese. Please. You're from Dearborn. In houses all across Dearborn, mothers are teaching little boys to crinkle their nose and revolt at the smell of odor. Maybe they don't even need instruction. Maybe it's an innate. I'm fasting. Poo poo. Yuck. What went wrong with you? With love's light wings, I have perched that oh, oh, your sorrow, boss. Oh. You don't really get ambivalence. You should. You're a satyr. A half man, half goat. But you don't get ambivalence. Animals don't get ambivalence. Ambivalence is the soul. It is our species being, and it goes against animal servitude. And human ambivalence is, it's too ambivalent to stand up for itself, I guess. And so, voila, you. I'm going to lie down now. <laughs> Time's almost up. Can I fuck you? <laughs> Can I fuck you? No! I'm oh, sorry, dear, no fucking tonight. <laughs> Don't let me leave you. I may not have a soul, but I'm beautiful, so... Hold on tight to me. I'm going to lie down. You always fall asleep when you lie down. It's your efficient resistance. Just for old times' sake. <laughs> what? Why resist? I haven't met anyone who wasn't overcome. Eventually. Oh, this pillow always smells. Many heads have been laid upon it. Uh, Hendrick, what about paternal ambivalence? What does it smell like, Hendrick? A tar. Or something nice. Not now, I'm trying to sleep. Thank you for seeing me. Aren't I sad? Paternal ambivalence. There's no such thing. My father lacked ambivalence. He hated me. Till he figured out how to swallow me. Which he did in three snaps of his mighty jaws and washed me down with beer. It hardly hurt. Him or me. Once incorporated, I was more or less safe and more or less whole. Though, spectacularly, 
lip smackingly, invincibly unappetizing. <clears throat> Hendrick? Hendrick! I have problems of my own. Our inability to love one another is probably one of humankind's greatest tragedies. Why can't people live up to their moral goodness? It's better to share. It's more pleasant to be kind. Maybe not in the moment, but immediately after. I mean, it's exhausting to despair. Surprises are always coming. Adversity is better met by good cheer and a placid spirit. Generosity lifts the soul. Sacrifice makes us free. For the happy woman, there is no terror in the night. Lass meine Schmerzen nicht verloren sein. Let my sorrow and my pain not be in vain. Don't kill yourself. Work. Each evening, come home to me. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. I love that. Surely they shall. Surely. Surely. For me, that word is so rotten with doubt and hesitation. It rings. It's a question in a closet. Don't kill yourself. Work. Each evening, come home to me.
better than the man you are. I paint mountains, I paint skies, I paint clouds in their formation. But still, I have reservations. How about painting you? Because when I do, it's just arms and legs. I capture nothing but these arms and legs. I stand and smile and try to paint you. I sit and I concentrate on your ass. I paint you. Alas. That's it. It's shit. Oh, I cannot paint you. I cannot burrow into your soul. The parts do not make a whole. And so I quit. Uh, I quit! Uh. <laughs> Remember the paintings I made when we met? Your silhouette? Hard to forget. But with each passing year, I fear. The more I love. The more I am incapable. Of painting you, but still I paint you. Yeah. But with each passing year, I fear. The more I love, the more I love. The more I am incapable. The more I am incapable. The more I am incapable of painting you. But still, I paint you. 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 I paint you.
at you. My love is strength and no more weakness. I love not less, the less the show appear. The love is merchandise whose rich is seeming. The owner's tongue doth publish everywhere. Our love was new and then but in the spring, when I was wont to greet it with my lace. As Philemon in summer's plant doth sing, and stops her pipe and grows the brighter days. Not that the summer is less pleasant now than when her mournful hips did hush the night, but that wild music burdens every bough, and sweets grown common lose their dear delight. Therefore, like her, I sometimes hold my tongue, because I would not dole you with my soul. Take it easy. I thought you said 
said that shrink of yours was helping She's you. She's helping me with the memory of my mother, who lowered my self esteem by competing with me for attention from my withholding father. That has nothing to do with this evening being over and done with. I give up. I don't know what you want from me. I want Diane Sawyer here, and I want Philip Glass here. I'll be here, honey. You I'll changed caterers. I hate caviar and baby bliss potatoes. Give me a cocktail, friend, or a Swedish meatball any day. How are you, Spencer? I'm terrific, Gary. Congratulations on your marriage. I ran into your wife's father in Washington the other day. Are you spending a lot of time with the Secretary of Transportation? It was a party at Ben Bradley and Sally Quinn's for our September issue. Oh. Well, you certainly caused a little buzz with that. Thank you. Huh. I didn't know you read women's magazines. I read everything. And you should do more about emerging Hollywood. No one cares about Michelle Pfeiffer and her babies anymore. Spencer, can I get you another spritzer? I'm fine, thanks. Well, honey, she just wants an excuse to run off and tell everyone she can't believe what I just said to her. I'll bring you back a Swedish meatball. <laughs> I've never understood your interest in that woman. She's a hideous climber, and everyone says she's going to be fired. That September issue was a total embarrassment, and the entire company is, is up for sale anyway. Are you buying it? Boring. If it was just about making money, I, I, I'd rather just stay at home with my... My wife. Uh, you're looking good. Thank you. Kids are good? Kids are great. Kids in Maine and Taylor's at this terrific summer camp in Cambodia. She's learning to plant rice and dig her on the train. Oh, so now you won't have to tip the doorman at 873 Park Avenue to, to do it anymore. That was an easy shot. You set it up. I read you bought that English publishing house. Now this is seriously interesting. You buy the world's largest chain of discount drugstores and nobody notices. You buy Jonathan Swift's bankrupt publishing house and Henry Kissinger congratulating you. By the way, you should have come to Alan's little thing for him. <sighs> well, I was here, organizing my own little thing. Well, I'd say. It was the classiest event of the summer. The regulars were there, like Mike and Diane Sawyer. And there were some neat surprises, too. Diane Sawyer was there? And Bill Bradley, and Steven Spielberg, and April Gornick, and Eric Fischel. The painters? Alan is considered a major collector now. Rena and I ran into him at the Guggenheim <laughs> opening in Bilbao. You know, I've never thought much of Jerry's work, but, but he's really hit his stride. But if I had to do it all over again, I, I'd, uh, I'd be an architect. Then you'd have to listen to other people's opinions. I hate that. <laughs> I know. A lot of your friends were there. And Harry. And the sex bird. Oh my God. And she so should good. be sued for malpractice for those tall I've tried those positions. They're only spot possible for a spastic giraffe or a lesbian hydra. Jerry, she's not here. Why do you let these kinds of people into your house? He's a friend of mine. She's an ex-lover of mine. That doesn't mean I have to feed her. <laughs> you know, after my first marriage, there was basically you and Rena. You two were the standout. Well, at least we had the most quotable fathers. So you liked Bill Bell? You really don't want to talk about us. Why is it until tonight? You've avoided meeting my new wife. I'm just waiting for Philip Glass. 
Why don't you tell your guests? If they all write a check, they can all go home then. They all just want to be excused anyhow. We all just saw each other at Henry Kissinger's. You don't have to stay here. I have to stay. I'm only here for you. Where's that guy you've been dating? He's inside. I heard he's something. Developer. Ooh, sounds promising. Oh, what does he develop? Pennsylvania. Mm. You can do better. <laughs> What's the matter with Pennsylvania? Nothing, nothing. Except Liberty Bell's condo. How do you know the name of his condo? I pay attention. That's my business. Uh, hold it. You shouldn't throw your life away on some dolt who drives a Lexus. Uh, does he wear Gucci loafers? It would kill me to see you with a guy in Gucci loafers. Uh, at least wait until you're four. <laughs> he wears Hermes loafers. Are you doing this deliberately? What are you talking about? What am I talking about? <coughs> there you are! Oh, we were just talking about you. This is such a beautiful house. Oh, I think it's one of Bobby Stern's better ones. A delightful play of air and light. Uh, Holden's father had it built. Yes, it was kind of a first wedding present. Uh, Holden's father was a philosophy professor at Princeton. A wonderful man, uh, sort of my idol. He was an alcoholic and married five times before his suicide. <laughs> <laughs> but at least he paid attention to what truly interests him. <laughs> now I have no robber barons in my family, so that was never an option for me. Hmm. These are beautiful lilies. Where are they from? Ecuador. Much hardier than the ones from Holland. Uh, Holden does her own flowers. It's a hobby of mine. My daughter once asked me why I hired a man to put flowers into a vase. <laughs> <laughs> Holden, honey, where's the guest of honor? Oh, he's on his way, Joe. Um, I don't believe you've met my friend. Uh, Joe, this is Jerry Gatchon. No, but of course, I'm always reading about you. Congratulations on that Binmark deal. You're killing every discount store on my side of the country. <laughs> We're opening next month in Moscow and Beijing. Oh. Who knew that in our lifetime we could say we made the world a safe place for Alka-Seltzer? <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, this is my wife, Rena. Uh, are you a big fan of Philip Glass? Holden took me to something of his. Uh, yes, the glass pieces, the, the Jerome Robbins ballet. Oh, that's the one. The one with the beautiful young people jumping across the stage. <laughs> that could be a lot of things. No, Joe, you're right. I know the way. Personally, I prefer something that goes somewhere. But I'll give them both credit. Ballet, rather than the jumpers, it's usually quite boring. Do you go to the ballet, Rita? We prefer the opera. We practically go every evening. I used to be intimidated by it, but I find it very easy to pick up. And that's how you stay young. Find something that interests you and stick to it. Say, have you ever been to an outbound trip? Alone, at night, on a mountain in Colorado. I'm from the suburbs of Pittsburgh, Joe. I already know the answer. I wouldn't survive a night without takeout Chinese. You eat a few roots in your thumb. I've been with him to Hurricane Island. I've sailed a Viking ship down the fjord. But just last week, I did something extraordinary. I went solo to the South Bronx for night. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible neighborhood. Crack vials on the street. People you think if you look at them in the face, you'll never see your kids again. First time I've really been scared in years, but I made it. <laughs> <clears throat> Once the baby's born, I want to teach cooking in a Phoenix house in the South Bronx. Oh, honey, they don't need to learn fat-free cooking at a Phoenix house in the South Bronx. <laughs> When's your baby due? Next March. Jerry wants a large family. I told him now that we got the ranch, even six kids is okay with me. Mm -hmm. What ranch? We got a little place. Uh, we got a little place in Jackson Hole, around <laughs> one thousand acres. Uh, very easy to get to if you don't have to rely on commercial airlines. <laughs> 
<laughs> we just pop over to Teterboro and we're there. Honey, people are beginning to leave. <laughs> Nora told me to give you a big kiss and to let you know that she had to go meet Diane Sawyer. And Kathleen Turner had to run out before the babysitter went inside. Oh, yes. Oh, we heard he wasn't coming. Oh, he's on his way. Uh, honey, we're expected for dinner. Uh, uh, who's dinner? Uh, just Joe and Patty. Are you going? No. Oh, there's a second rate town for a gift for snoozing. And she's lucky she hasn't been indicted. I thought they were friends of yours. You two know each other? <laughs> we're a queen. Nice seeing you again. Nice seeing you again, too. Mm -hmm. It was a great party. Hold and tell, please tell Mr. Glass I'm one of his greatest friends. Mm -hmm. Yes, of course. Laura! Yes? I really enjoyed your last call. <laughs> Thank you. Good night. <laughs> Say, what is it she writes about? Blowjobs! <laughs> <laughs> That takes guts. She can't help herself. <laughs> I better go tell them he's on the way. Why don't we just invite everyone out for dinner? There's nothing wrong with a little bit of white wine and lobster overlooking the ocean. Oh, you're already at that side of the beach. Uh, you go ahead. What? Uh, you go ahead. I, I, I can't leave my guests. Oh, we'll leave you at your own party? No, please. Um, go take Spencer and, and get a lobster on the beach. What are you talking about? I prefer that you go. Jerry, this is your fault! What? I, I didn't say a word! Why are you here? I was invited. I wanted my old friend to meet my new wife. Hmm. Rena and Jerry have bought a ranch where they're hoping to raise a family. Oh, You're not giving Rena the credit she's due. Rena graduated Phi Beta Kappa from Bowdoin. She got into Harvard Medical School. Jerry, you don't have to tell everyone that. Why not? It happens to be true. Arena is setting up the Rena and Jerry Gashan Pediatrics Foundation. <laughs> I think I would like to go home now. I'm feeling a little tired. We can't leave now. Would you drop me at home? Oh, of course. What the hell are you doing? My feet are hurting. I need to lie down. You can lie down here until the guest of honor arrives. Oh, Spencer and I will take her home. You're a gentleman, Joe. I'll take her off her off, and I will be right back. Oh, you don't have to. Are you insane? No. I'm just waiting for the glass. You just sent a perfectly nice man away. I thought I shouldn't throw myself away on a dog who drives a Lexus. Oh, you shouldn't, you shouldn't listen so carefully to everything I say. Your wife is charming. I liked her a lot. She gets tired. But when you total it all up, she makes the most sense. A good long-term investment? Don't be crude. You know, I, I didn't get to bail about. I am crude. God! Would you excuse me while I go retrieve my party? What the hell is wrong with you? Nothing. I, I just want to tell them to wait. That's it makes thing. no difference if they wait. wrong with your life. You're absolutely right. There's nothing wrong with it at all. Let me take you to dinner tonight. After he leaves. I can't. I have a date. Your date just left. He's not my only date. So you're leaving me here alone? <laughs> Good for me, bad for you. Isn't that what you once said in business had to be This true? isn't business! This is... Uh, this is friendship. I'm tired of friendship. 
Good night, Jerry. Thanks so much for dropping by. You have, you have no idea how much I respect you. It's great news about Finmar in Moscow. Please, you, you, you don't have to. Most likely, I won't be here in the morning. And lilies that fester smell far worse than weeds. Good night. That thou chase life to keep came tripping by, but in her maiden hand. The fairest vultury took up that fire which many legions the true hearts have worn. And so the general of hot desire was sleeping by a virgin, hand disarmed. This brand she quenched in a cool well by, which from lust fire to keep perpetual, growing a bath and healthful remedy for men diseased. But I, my mistress's thrall, came there for cure, and this that I prove loves fire. Water, water cool, not love. That was sound of 154. Can we go back to 153? Cupid laid by his brand. Um, sing it. Uh, sing it. Uh, brand. Ah, let 
like a torch. Oh. This advantage found? Um, pelican. Um, pelican. Um, opportunity. And his love kindling fire to be steep. Steep um, as in staircase? Cliff notes, cliff notes. We have university paperbacks, and you're bringing out the cliff notes? I'm not too proud. Oh, oh. Steep, steep. Ah, like tea. You dunk the tea bag in the water and steep. Oh, like a tea bag. Tea bag? I don't understand one word of this song. Well, if you read the sonnet in one swoop, the meaning becomes. I'm looking for a larger meaning. But found no cure, the bath for my health lies, where Cupid got no fire, my mistress's eyes. Where Shakespeare paid to write these songs. I don't think so. Wait! Is this the hook? Royalty paying for praise for an oppressed artist. Economics, pre-Marxist exploitation of the lower classes in Elizabethan England. Why, Hamish? Then what is the sonnet really about? You are the prime example of the failure of modern education. What the hell does all that mean? A love cannot be quenched. You've been asleep by a magic spring. The world is falling apart of Bosnia, Northern Ireland, the Middle East. Let's do a play about Cupid asleep. Cupid! <laughs> what the fuck yeah! Art has to change the world. Art has to be a call to action. That's some essay on the sleeping cube. This is such an old-fashioned argument. The old, how can you have beauty when so much ugliness exists in the world? The old, how dare you have comedy in a time of tragedy? The world in a time of hate? It's a basically flawed argument. Art is one thing. Politics is, it's not worth I refuse to do courtly sentiments of love. Art has to make some sense of life. Illuminate life. That's the purpose of art. Uh, that's our duty. What is the purpose of the sun? Could Hamish leave? Oh, I have the sun it needs. I thought my love was dead, but I see you and love is back. It's like Motown. Oh, yeah. Oh, Bosnia, Northern Ireland, Middle East. Um, cliff notes. Let's see. No, this is not one of the Dark Lady songs. Uh, but is it one of the sonnets to the mysterious young man? The world's fresh ornament? That's a hook. Explore the issues of gender and race. Shakespeare is torn between the Dark Lady and the young man. Shakespeare's torment! I can do that! Blow wins to be or not to Cambridge be. says nothing about gender. Or race, I have you. Oh. Cliff notes. Okay. Okay. Sonnets 153 and 154 are not about the young man or the dark lady sonnets or economics. It's just about love. Shut the fuck up, Hamish. <laughs> fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. <laughs> a dateless lively heat still to endure and grew a seething bath. A seething bath? Angry, as in seething mad. The bathtub is angry. <laughs> Perfect sense! Surrealism. The bath footnote, undoubtedly a reference to the waters of the town of Bath, says nothing about the Greek original. Greek original? Ah, ah, yes, 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 yes. yes. <clears throat> Sonnets 153 and 154. The original source appears to be an epigram in the Greek anthology. Uh, controversies has raged over Shakespeare's sources. Wait, 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 just wait, just hold on. Are you telling me Shakespeare did write these sonnets? Um, Pelican. Um, um, Pelican. Um, let's, let's see, let's see. Um, sonnets 154 and 155. Their authenticity has been questioned. 
question? Um, monarch. Um, monarch. Um, all right. Um, they have translated 153 and 154 from the Greek when he was 15. Fifteen? <laughs> what? Sorry. Fifteen years old? Are you telling me we're doing Shakespeare's homework? Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> wait, wait. Uh, I got Helen Bindler! <laughs> seven days, and then fell asleep in his hot desire. Rob, I see a spring! Oh, a stream! Oh. A river! The sea! sea! Cupid! Not Cupid! Not arrows. Not Venus. Something, Something bigger. bigger. Wings! Arrows! An angel! Not just an angel. An, an archangel. archangel can fit in the sonnet. Get the ah! Get it on! Get in the character! Get in the character! Somebody get in the character! Ah! Yes. 
learn with red. Two of them, Eve, who, who named one, and daylight, still thinks it's her task of naming things, and she can't lose the habit. Despair. Oh. Isolation. Oh. Depression. Oh. Shut up, shut up. Grief. Self-pity. Two of their sons never stop fighting on the barren gray desert. You did it! You did it! Oh, oh, oh. Woo! Rage, blame, <laughs> defeat, resentment. Adam steps between Abel and Cain and receives a blow to the heart. <gasps> Woo! Oh. Oh. The first, since this was about to be the first, death. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I am terrified by this nameless thing. But I know this my time on earth is now over. I know there had once been water in abundance, but now there was only desert. I know there had been. had been. Oh, love. It's, it's love. Love. He doesn't care. Adam remembered love, but he did not remember the name. For it is the one thing he had named, but now it no longer existed. He called it the want of a better word. Water. There's got to be a spring. Water. God, hear me. Get what they deserve. From my tree of knowledge. The tree holds classified information. Knowledge there is no reason for you to know. I am the general of hot desire. You hate him! You hate him! <laughs> Seth, pound the rocks! Try to get the water out of them! Get that water, Seth! Get it! I'm trying! Oh, no. Come on, your father's dying! Get him some water! <laughs> this will help you, father. And the pain is so great that something new is born, man. Sympathy. Pod. How do we get your attention? What do we do to make you hear us? Cut. Hear me. Michael does not want to disobey. But Adam's pain causes him. Anguish. Revulsion. Self-loathing. It's pain! It's just pain. You're naming all these words. It's just the word pain. Forget it. <laughs> <laughs> you. You man. Take the seeds from the tree that caused all this trouble, the tree of knowledge. Take them and plant them in your father's mouth. Then plant your father in the earth. <laughs> better, better. This is not mercy. This is knowledge. I've tasted this crap before. <laughs> What the hell have you given me? This is a taste that can never be satisfied. I did not want knowledge. I wanted mercy. 
I want mercy, and you give me none. Death. <laughs> what is death? The opposite of love. God, hear me. Yeah, again, they've eaten from the tree of knowledge. Drive your father away from me. And so, the first family is expelled to an even darker desert. Where? I and Abel and Cain bury our father. Abel, Abel and Cain resume their battle. You did it! You did it! No! 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 There's got to be love. Years go by, and out of my father's mouth grows a tree, which gives me shade and some form of fear. <laughs> Shut up, mother. Comfort. <laughs> and when it comes time for my mother to die, I had it all. I had Eden. I had it all. We buried her by my father under the tree. And then it came my time. <laughs> And we bury my father beneath the tree, and then his sons and daughters, and then our sons and daughters. We nourish the tree until it flowers. Now look, water, a spring bubbles up beside the tree. The tree flowers. Oh, man. God smell the scent of blossoms, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> what is that tree? Where did it come from? <laughs> that tree is knowledge? They did it again? Who gave them the seeds? How did they do it? Destroy them! And so, God turns his back on the world yet again and lets the people who live under that tree be drowned in floods, then taken into slavery. But, as the years go by, the roots of the tree travel secretly, silently, silently, <laughs> under the cover of the earth. And some of the roots come up in India and nurture a baby called Buddha. <laughs> in South America, a god called Kotomak. And the North Pole, they call all the gods. The tornadoes, the invisible rulers. And Africa. A god called Ifejoku! Oh, what a man! Aku! God of the sea! Akpala! Emediora! Ani, owner of all lands! Call me what you want! I still don't hear! The roots of the tree keep sprouting up! A man keeps building things with it! Trying to get the attention of God! A pyramid! A statue! A poem! Moses! remembers a dream of a tree he's never seen and has to get back to a river he's never seen and has to get back to a tree he's never known. And he frees his people and he gets back to that tree. And David becomes king. And when David dies, his son, Solomon, is now king. I sit beneath this tree by this river and try to write a poem with paper made from this tree. Using a pencil I pulled from this tree and when winter comes, I love this tree so much. <laughs> the roots of the tree travel the earth yet again and some of them come up in Africa. Solomon receives the first letter ever written from the king of Sheba. I am the king of Sheba. Oh. In Africa, all my sons have died in battle. My daughter now rules as queen. For the first gift of her coronation, she'll be sent on a trip to gain knowledge. And word has reached us that you are the wisest man in the world, for you sit under the tree of knowledge. Please receive my daughter and the king, the queen, Sheba, and instruct her. Sheba is amazed by her world. She stops when she sees the bridge over this river. A sprig of new growth pops up. She bends down to pull off a twig. She is struck down by a terrible vision. Put those things back! They are not to be removed! Haven't you learned anything? How many 
times do I expel you from paradise? I had to sleep between my breasts. God goes back to sleep, dreaming of the next time, the next creation. A universe filled with obedient armadillos. <laughs> Walk gently on this bridge. Walk silently on this bridge. God does not want you to have peace. God does not want you to have comfort. Uh, why don't you just obey God and be quiet and shut up? Michael! I'm trying to sleep. I'm sorry. <laughs> the Savior will one day hang from a cross made from the wood of this tree. Tell Solomon to hide his wood. Tell him religion won't catch his ear. Many nymphs that bow chase love to you, King. <laughs> came chirping by, but in her maiden hand, the fairest gold ring took up that fire which many legions of true hearts had worn. And so the general of hot desire. Was sleeping by a virgin plant disarmed. A friend she points to the cool well by, which from love's fire took heat perpetual wall, growing a bath and help by vanity. <laughs> For men diseased, but I, my mistress's thrall, came there for pure, and this by that I Looks fire heats water, but it cools mad love. I am the rose of Sharon, and the lily of the valley. And as the lily is among the thorns, so is my love among the daughters. And as this tree is among the trees of the wood, so is my beloved among the world of men. Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth, for thy love is better than wine. And something happened that God couldn't understand, and Eve could never name. Humans invent a fragile fantasy of their time spent in Eden. Rise up, my fair one. My love, you come away. Below the winter is past and gone. The rains are over. The flowers appear on the earth. The time of the singing of the birds has come. Arise, my mother. My general hot desire. And we come, come away. away. She will remember her vision and tells this. Solomon, who you are terrified of that it means. Oh. You're terrified. Terrified. trying to get God's attention. 
Religions grow. People make music. They paint pictures. Sculpt marble. Carve stone. Build cathedrals. Trying to get the attention of God. <laughs> Some of the wood floated to the surface and was used to build a stable in Bethlehem. A child is born in this wooden place. The boy Christ works as a carpenter at the edge of the river. He drinks from the river. The water is briny and salt. The river has become the Dead Sea. As Jesus saws and parts the wood, he inhales the tree of knowledge. He conceives the notion that knowledge must become love. This fragile impulse must be the mechanism that drives the world. Eden? Eden? It's back! Shit! I awakened one more time to see what has happened. I thought I had destroyed! Michael! I didn't do it. She is no good! Yet again, it's time to drive humans out of the hope of Eden. I created an angel named Judas. Get rid of this would-be self-proclaimed prophet. I don't want any more contact with these humans. One chance they had, their one chance. Judas, Judas turned, turned in Christ, Christ to the Romans for giving man hope. When Christ was sentenced to die by crucifixion, the Romans looked for wood to build the cross. The wood from the tree of life breaks free from its surface under the earth and floats to the surface. Pilate's men take the wood, not knowing that it is wood from the tree of knowledge, and make the crosses. The moment of death on Golgotha is so violent, the cross sinks to the bottom of the earth. Judas feels, feels it. it. Feels all hope go from the world. Now will they learn? Then three days later, Jesus comes back refusing to die. My God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? Do you not hear me? Jesus turns to you for the words he's trying to name. The words? Yeah. I'm still naming things? Yeah. <laughs> this damn tree. We chop it down. We carve its wood. We eat its leaves. Constantly mistaking knowledge for mercy. We keep constantly taking from that tree. That's all we know. All God knows is how to expel us from Eden over and over. All man knows is how to try to get back. Play on wood pipes, sing songs, make a sonnet. A, B, A, B, C, D, C, D, E, F, E, F, G, G. Can 14 lines bear so much weight? The weight of auditioning for God, hoping this time he'll hear us? A symphony, a drawing, a dance, a sonnet. These fragile inventions of man demand only defense against the silence of God. And we keep trying to contact that which cannot be contacted, name that which cannot be named, define that which can never be defined. What are our tools? Something as paltry as a sonnet, a song, a dance, a story, is a hazy reminder of what we had in the garden when the tree of knowledge grew around for us mercy. God, we wanted mercy, and all you gave us was knowledge. God goes back to sleep. My next universe. My next. The roots of the tree keep sprouting up yet again through the ground. And that's it. That's all I got. Come on, Diana. Isn't it rather hard? Ah, uh, cliff notes, cliff notes, cliff notes. Uh, it says here that many of Shakespeare's sonnets are too often marred by strained conceits. <laughs> what about Islam? Yeah, what about I Islam? I think it's anti-Semitic. I think it's racist. Well, fuck you and fuck racist. Oh, fuck you. No, 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 fuck you. No,